you took what you learned in prison and you're applying it out here. Uh, how are we going to get everybody to vote, though, man? What are we going to do to get black people to vote other than tell them, hey, you know you can vote now? Uh, ind individuals have to know the power that's inherent in, in the vote and just think historically if voting was important, wh why did so many people die for us to have the right to vote? Mm -hmm. Them, pe them people didn't die because this was uh, unimportant. And you think uh, that your right to vote doesn't count when, in fact, the time that your vote counts the most is when you don't use it. Because when you don't use it, you don't put your name and your voice on paper in opposition to what's wrong in your community. And uh, the voter numbers, the voter turnout in the city, in the city, in the county, in the state of California are dismal. These politicians are getting elected uh, by numbers that is unbelievable. There are more individuals recently released from prison uh, last month than some of these politicians needed votes to get elected. I'm going to say that again. There are more individuals released from somewhere last month than the votes necessary for some of these politicians to hold office in the communities that we live in that's determining your social destiny. The reason why you got potholes is because some politicians didn't want to do something. The reason why the police are behaving the way that they are and there's no communication from the streets to headquarters to make them uh, not be an occupying force but to come to the community and serve for what they're getting paid for is because we are unengaged and we don't know what's going on. We need to get involved if we want to change the communities that we live in and make them comfortable and safe. What do you think of Congresswoman Maxine Waters? Uh, you think she's she's good unapologetic. For you think she's good for the black community? I think she's good in the sense that she, she will show another black individual, male or female, what can be accomplished as a politician. And how are we going to get more people like her into Congress? I mean, we have to we have to start uplifting our folks. Well, we need to start padding, stop padding the gang roles, the street roles with our young intellectuals. We need to stop allowing individuals that could be corporate leaders and politicians and become gang leaders and wind up in prison where they have no impact, where they're ineffective. We we need to start. Uh, Telling individuals, hey, stay away from that street stuff. Don't get that first felony so you don't even have to worry about it. Uh, stay in school, get the fundamentals of education, but also get a life education by the wisdom of older individuals who are around you and utilize that to uplift yourself and empower where you come from. Are there any groups that you know of, of different G's like yourself from different neighborhoods that come together and discuss what we're discussing right now? Um, I think, yeah, I think... Uh, with the I know with the with the individuals from NHB the twenties, you got you got the second call group, which uh they do weekly meetings all over town. They do them on the west side, they do them in Inglewood. Uh what they do is they teach individual life skills and get individuals employed in, you know, good ways, earning careers, union careers. They do it. You have some groups name escaping me at this time in Compton, but there are a few individuals that work inside the Volunteers of America uh, that is in Compton who also engage in job development, helping helping individuals get jobs that have these same kind of conversations. Uh, let me see where else. And then there's, you know, then there's a, this group who I find myself going to these meetings, uh, this ceasefire group that, that started out as a like a gang intervention group, which basically has turned into a peer-to-peer -peer support group that allows individuals to come in and do some degree of healing and share their story and try to find solutions. And it's the same kind of conversation that take place. And those are like street-based groups, but within uh, some of these community-based organizations, these are conversations that's happening all the time. Uh, the problem is, is individuals like me and you aren't at their table because we're unaware of it. We don't want to get involved because we don't think it can help us. Do you think uh, between prevention and intervention, one's more important than the other? Yeah, prevention is always important. 
prevention is the most important because that eliminates the problem Later before on. the intervention is necessary. Right. Are, are there actually any intervention, uh, or let's say, any prevention things going on in elementaries that you're aware of? Uh, I believe so. I think uh, through the city, through the city, they have this program called Safe Passage, and all of like the, the grid groups, this uh, gang reduction and youth development, have a Safe Passage component. And they're allowed to like be at in or near school campuses to provide safe passage for some of the kids. As far as being inside the schools with some curriculum or uh, delivering a conversation to try to get these kids to think different, that that's a sticky situation because you know once the individual got that felony conviction, it's hard. Uh, to get those waivers to get inside schools and for us you know that's some of us you know we've made those mistakes and and, and got those marks on our records but uh yeah and still we have information that's needed inside them schools do you think guys like me or you or anyone in your area or my area that been through our same path will be allowed into the prisons to talk to people about oh, stuff like absolutely this? it's individuals that's it's in with with arc it's a group of individuals uh, that's led by this dude, Sam Lewis. He got a team of five or six folks that go in prison all day, every day to talk about the same things we're talking about, to give an individual that idea that, hey, you need to change in here before you get back if you want to be successful. Do they visit women's prisons as well? Yes, they do. It's crazy how in the black community, though, change sometimes is looked at as is not good. Um, I mean, some of us fear change because it gets us out of our comfort zone. And here's the sad thing about it. Here's the irony of it. Your comfort zone, how can we be comfortable being miserable? I mean, if, if your needs aren't being met, how can you allow yourself to be comfortable? Not only if you are like struggling psychologically to make your world make sense. Because if you live a particular life, if you live a particular life, if you spend 50 years in the street and wake up one morning and you don't have anything, how can you be comfortable with that? How, how can you be comfortable uh, with the minuscule amounts of money, this subsidized money that's being handed out, GR, SSI, all that stuff, when there are enormous amounts of opportunities all day, every day, jobs everywhere. They say it ain't no jobs. There's jobs everywhere. I remember about 11 or 12 years ago, uh, me and you were corresponding while you was locked up. And, uh, oh, you remember that, huh? <laughs> and you had mentioned that a lot of these guys was doing uh, work for the mayor's office, for the yeah. government. Yeah. Uh, do you still feel the same way about these guys dealing with police and shit? What's the feeling? Describe the feeling. Uh, well, you was just saying that they kind of like... Um, uh, how can I say it? Uh, you know, the money was like people was doing it without real intention. They was there to get the paychecks, and uh, and some guys were actually working with the police. I I still I still feel the same. I think that some of us get ourselves in situations that we're ill equipped to deal with, that we don't have the skill set not to be utilized as a tool against your best the best interests of the communities you represent if that makes sense because you take an individual who just might be like popular that don't mean you you know you have the intellectual capacity to move around a particular way so i still feel that and i and i feel that uh don't don't co-op change for a small amount of money in these organizations, uh, there's an opportunity to create uh, a sustainable occupation and wage. Now that I've been out and I've moved around in some of these circles, what I've discovered is that the academics have co-opted the information and they have become the trainers. 
And I, I don't think that's right. I don't. There's no individual who has a college degree in social psychology can tell me anything about the street life. Just because you studied it in a book and you've been credentialed uh, by a certificate that says uh, you wrote a thesis or whatever, and it was about prison life. You wrote a thesis about the life I live. I have an understanding of that that you could never have that's internal. Right. Yeah, you have an, a visual and an external ID with it. I lived it. You can't you can't train me how to address uh, informed trauma. I'm traumatized. Everybody that I grew up with practically is in jail or dead. So how, how are you going to tell me to process that emotion and the things that I need to do? If I wasn't able to do that, I wouldn't have the degree of sanity that I have now. I wouldn't be able to move around or communicate in the manner that I do now. So you can't fill a room up with individuals and say, hey, this is how you should operate. This is how you talk to folks. I know how to talk to me when I was 12 years old. I was 12. I know what I wouldn't listen to. I know who was full of it. I know how to talk to me when I was 16. I know I was absent. I know what was missing. I know what would have caused change. I know the kind of individuals that I looked up to and why I looked up to them. So I know how to be an individual that is the best example of, and if for nothing else, if an individual looked at me and reflects some kind of discontent, it's because they don't like that I don't want to be the person that I used to be. I don't want to be the toxin to my community that I used to be. I think it's in, in my destiny to be the kind of individual that changes the footsteps and the path we walk and, make, and makes others feel like uh, that change is possible, that anybody can change, that it's never too late. The only time it's too late to change is when the judge says you have now been sentenced to a particular amount of time, you know you ain't getting back, or you you in that millisecond where you know you've made that mistake and you're about to cross over and see what that other life looks like. Did you get any institutional further education when you was locked up? Uh, I tried, I tried the, the college courses, but because they're limited and you can only take like the ones that they provide, there was nothing that I was interested in. Yeah. I did a, but on, on my own, I did like a physical therapy and a physical fitness course just so, you know what I mean? If, if when I got free, there were individuals who wanted to uh, like upgrade their physical level, like, hey, you know, we could do it just as a component of to develop relationship. So I did that. I'm curious to know if, if they uh, allow people to learn black history. Absolutely. They did. You can learn anything. Yeah. Okay. So how, how I mean, where I was, they didn't have this uh, into Hatchby yeah. level three and two. Is this something that's been going on or is something that they just started? They, they, they always have the opportunity to learn. They just don't tell you. You have to do the research. You have to do the ask. There's no provision of, hey, do you want to get smarter? Because if you get smarter, guess what? You're going to realize that you shouldn't be in the situation that you're in. Does the parole board encourage this? The fainting parole board don't encourage nothing but to stay arrest-free. Or while you're in there, all the parole board encourages is for you to admit your crime, demonstrate uh, a degree of remorse, and stay disciplinary-free. Mm. Get a couple of certificates. Get, go to AA, go to anger management, go to CA, GA, get all these certificates, which are formulaic, but don't necessarily indicate that you change. And it just indicate that you're going through the process. Exactly. So this uh, education or further education while locked up is, is falls on the individual? Falls on the individual. So I don't know. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything on your mind? Uh, I'm, Folks just need to know when you when you have people coming home from prison, you've got to understand that this is an individual that may look whole, but in the inside there's something going on. There is a there's a deprivation of humanity that takes place in prison that a lot of us that are in prison aren't even aware of that we're embracing like these ways and we bring it out here with an, with uh without knowing that we've incorporated these ways and it impacts us on every level, particularly 
with our families. We go back to these families and assume that we have like this role within the family structure, not realizing that after a particular amount of time, you a stranger. That it it you have to uh, get to know who you are in this new world, what baggage you brought back with you, because we bring a lot of baggage back, and the person that you need to be within the within the family structure in order to make. To make that work because it's a struggle to some you know to some of our families we're weirdos hmm. because we had these ways i mean we got some of us are excessively clean some of us are just the opposite some of us are excessively talkative some of us don't say much uh some of us have lost the ability to experience joy and if we haven't lost it we've lost the ability to be able to express it so we always walking around stone face making folks uncomfortable and, and then because we come from these environments where it necessitates us like putting on these images so we won't be uh, approached in an aggressive manner, we walk around in what I like to call walking around with a gun in your pocket and you don't have a gun in your pocket. So it's easy to identify that you're not of a particular environment and the assumption goes that you must have gotten out somewhere. So, you know, family members know that what individuals need, they need support, they need understanding, they don't they don't need the iron fist where now you out, you need to go out and get your life together. You gotta, you know, it's hard to put your life together after you've been up in them places, uh, like navigating a degree of insanity that it's hard like to understand on this side of the fence, on this side of the wall, because there's some emotional stuff that takes place for each of us individually. None of us do time the same way. Two individuals could be in the same cell, moving around the same way, but the time and the emotion that it takes to maintain in that space is totally different. Some of, you know, some of us spend years and years and years hating ourselves and hating others, and we mask that in the best that way we can and then come out here and once we're free, then the, the necessity to compartmentalize that, to constrict that and not and not uh, express that is no longer here. That's why you have a lot of, uh, of us who come home and we're highly volatile. We're highly emotional because the restrictions are gone. I don't, uh, in a way, I don't have to be good no more. I ain't got to hold back now. Because, you know, there's no discipline, immediate disciplinary consequences. So I've been pressed all these years. You're not going to press me like they was pressing me up in there. I ain't in jail no more. So just, you know, just understand that and engage in the relationships with the folks who you have who have been there knowing that, hey, I'm trying to help this individual you uh, regain their humanity. Because though you are free, don't mean you get your humanity back. You got to get that back on your own. All right, introduce yourself. My name is OG Cubes from the West Side Magnificent Seven.